With NASA's Artemis program re-emerging in news due to production delays, we thought that it would be a good idea to revisit the ambitious plan on this channel. The Artemis program, which intends to place a woman and a person of color on the moon by 2024, an ambitious goal that the previous U.S. presidential administration set for NASA as part of the Artemis program to further enhance the lunar research and send an empowering message, has seemed to have been failing in its race against time. And the culprit is none other than Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin, which has seemed to be at odds with NASA's decision to award a contract for the HLS moon lander to SpaceX. This in turn has further proved how Bezos is hell-bent on challenging Elon Musk's never-ending glory in the modern-day space race. Following the protests and an open letter to Nelson from Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin decided to file a federal lawsuit against the agency for its decision along with its fellow space company Dynetics. The legal controversy takes its roots in the fact that SpaceX won the bid to assist NASA with the Artemis program, beating bids by Blue Origin and Dynetics. NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.89 billion contract to develop and manufacture a modified variant of the Starship for lunar landings. The initial goal of the project was to conduct two flights, an uncrewed demonstration mission and a crewed lunar landing. And when it couldn't get any worse, NASA's Office of Inspector General, after an extensive investigative audit, discovered that NASA will not meet its goal to produce its spacesuits, called the Exploration Extra Vehicle Mobility Unit XEMU, in time to land humans on the moon. The audit read that NASA's current schedule is to produce the first two flight-ready XEMUs by November 2024, but the agency faces significant challenges in meeting this goal, which burst a lot of hopes. NASA has already poured $420 million into development since 2007 and plans to drop another $625 million to make two spacesuits flight ready, but they won't be ready due to funding shortfalls, COVID-19 impacts, and technical challenges. However, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson stepped up to utter words of optimism in Colorado at the 36th Annual Space Symposium. We can do hard things, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said. We are a can-do people, while reiterating that NASA has no plans of backing down from its moon landing goal despite recent obstacles. The program, named after the Greek goddess of the moon, if successful against all odds, would mean that NASA would be returning to the moon after almost 50 years. The main attraction of the Artemis program is going to be the Artemis Base Camp that will be developed near the Shackleton Crater next to the moon's south pole, which is in line with NASA's vision to develop a human foothold on the moon to support further deep space manned and unmanned missions. Some areas of the South Pole receive over 200 Earth days of continuous sunlight, and the sunlight can be harvested to illuminate a lunar base and power its equipment. NASA chose the South Pole for the 2024 Artemis landing site because it has a lot of water ice. As shipping water to the moon is extremely expensive, water ice on the moon can be melted and potentially used for drinking water and cooling equipment. Moreover, as water can be split into hydrogen and oxygen, they could be used to make rocket fuel and for breathing. When areas of the lunar surface are exposed to sunlight, it serves as a source of power and light. The facility will require infrastructure for power, waste disposal and communications, as well as radiation shielding and a landing pad. According to NASA, the landing pad should be ideally separated from other base camp features such as their habitat or solar panels by at least half a mile or one kilometer. It will also play a critical support role for NASA and SpaceX's manned mission to Mars. As mobility is a major focus for NASA to fully utilize its moon base, robust mobility systems will be needed to explore and develop the moon. Artemis Base Camp is planned to be supported by two mobility systems, a lunar terrain vehicle that will help astronauts traverse across the lunar surface and a habitable mobility platform that could support trips away from the base for up to 45 days. The same is true for Mars, making the habitable mobility platform a particularly important element as we will need a similar type of vehicle to explore the Red Planet. SpaceX will be transporting astronauts from the Lunar Orbital Gateway to the base camp on the surface, 
This will be done by using a lunar lander variant of SpaceX's Starship rocket called the Starship HLS. The HLS stands for Human Landing System. The Starship itself is SpaceX's flagship rocket who will be leading the charge towards Mars as part of NASA and SpaceX's plans to visit and colonize Mars. This modified Starship was optimized for a human landing on the Moon. The main difference between the standard Starship design and Starship HLS is the lack of heat shields and air brakes, which is due to the fact the Moon doesn't have an atmosphere to heat the Starship HLS. The plan is for the Starship HLS to take off from Earth uncrewed using the Super Heavy boosters and it will reach the lunar orbit in approximately three days. After that, the Starship will just hover in orbit awaiting its four-membered astronaut crew who will perform their journey from Earth to lunar orbit on NASA's Orion spacecraft. Starship HLS is designed to dock in lunar orbit with either the NASA Orion spacecraft or NASA Lunar Gateway Space Station to take on passengers before descending to the lunar surface. For its first mission, two astronauts will stay on the lunar gateway while two astronauts will go down the lunar gravity well towards the surface. On the Starship HLS, the first lunar surface mission is planned to last a week performing experiments and exploring the lunar surface they will be using Starship HLS as a living space. Fourteen days later, service astronauts shall rejoin the rest of the crew that stayed on the lunar gateway in orbit. Coming back to the landing pad, it will be situated at a different elevation to prevent descending spacecraft from spraying high-speed debris at equipment or areas of scientific interest. This is important because according to their estimates, thrust from the landing spacecraft could potentially spray hundreds of kilograms of surface particles, water, and other gases across several kilometers. Ruth and Lewis, a biomechanical and industrial engineer, architect, and a leader on NASA's South Pole site analysis and planning team, said that you want to take advantage of the landform, such as hills that can act as barriers to minimize the impact of contamination added by saying that they were looking at distances, elevations, and slopes in their planning. The Artemis base camp must be on the Earth-facing side to make it easier for engineers to use radio waves to communicate with astronauts working on the Moon. But scientists expect that over billions of years of meteorite impacts to the Moon's surface, rocks and dust from each hemisphere were kicked up and strewn about the other so it's possible that astronauts could collect samples of the far side from their base camp on the near side. NASA is also taking various universities, researchers, and engineers on board to cause a surge in scientific advancement by issuing grants to them. This ambitious project is undoubtedly a representative of mankind's eagerness to explore the final frontier, make it further into our knowledge of space, and give out a message of hope for ages to come if things go according to plan and the mission is a success.